What are some company secrets you can now reveal since you don't work for the company anymore? I worked at a white castle from 2000 to 2003. It was clean. Nothing super disgusting at all. All of the equipment got a thorough cleaning every 24 hours. The floors were mopped regularly. Walls were wiped down. Everything. The food was always fresh. If the burgers cooled enough for the buns to get hard. They were trashed. If fry sides sat under heat lamp for 15 minutes. They were trashed. We threw away a lot of food. We had to track it all for inventory purposes. And filled up a couple pages a day of stuff we threw out. Even when the bulk of the crew was teenagers. We really were trying to work fast and do a good job. Every year or so. They made us get timed on the griddle by our regional manager. Everyone had to do it. Starting with a clean griddle you had to fully prepare. Box and bag 30 hamburgers as fast as possible without cutting any corners. I know not all locations are like that. Nor are all fast food restaurants. But when I was working there. We did a really good job of everything. Just wanted to share a happy story. The code for the intercom at Walmart is 4444 on the store phones. Applebee's. On the tabletop computers. Go to extras and tap and hold the little white space on the top left of the screen. When it gives a password prompt. It's 4321. Let's you change the table numbers or play games for free. It has been several years. But when I worked at certain satellite TV company. They had a value system for customers. You are valued at 1-5 stars. Based on how much you spend and how much they value you as a customer. If you are a higher star value, they will do basically anything to keep you. You will get a ton of services and equipment for free. And they will bend over backwards to keep you from cancelling. If you are a 1 or 2 star, they don't give a sheet. Especially 1 stars. Because it usually means that you are late all the time. Or that you don't spend very much. If you call in asking for deals or credits, they won't give it to you. If you threaten to cancel. No one cares. Also. There are special phone lines for people they consider vips. They never have to wait on hold. And only special employees are allowed to take the phone calls. Cleaning up animals after an oil spill is feel good propaganda to make the public think they are helping. 90% of those animals will be dead within a few days or weeks. They've ingested enough of the oil that they are moving corpses. They, and you mister. Nice person with a bottle of Dawn dish soap, just don't know it yet. Real oil spill work is done by trained professional crews. Not volunteers. If you ever tried to help. You were given busy work to keep you out of the way. Former Geek Squad here, most of the people that work there. Aren't really technical at all. We usually just walk it over to a bench. Hook it up to a corporate LAN and run just run some software. If there are real issues, people remotely connect from India or somewhere else. We are basically just salesmen with a clip on tie. We didn't meet the contractual obligations to entirely destroy the laptops Google sent to us for decommissioning. We shredded the HDDs and sold the laptops for a profit. Couldn't do shit about the servers though. Google branding all over them. A high class spa I worked at used Epsom salts and vegetable oil for their $65 salt scrubs. I worked at UPS ages ago. The word fragile on a box meant nothing to us. So make sure you pack your stuff properly. I used to work for a large smartphone company. During development. We used to go through phases. Engineering verification testing stage. Design verification test. Production verification test. And finally mass production. Each stage was meant to have checkpoints in order to ensure that the final product was built with good quality and any known bugs would be able to iron out before the product launch. Any bug that was not resolved would potentially have the ability to delay the launch. Except that there is a thing called waivers. So the PM could request that certain bugs be granted a waiver delaying the fix of the problem to later date. No big deal. Every project has a few minor bugs. Right? 
For each state there would be hundreds of waivers. Some would be minor. To be fair. But sometimes they were definitely not minor. I will never. Ever. Buy an electronic device in the first three months of mass production. Wait for the second wave of production. The quality of the product increases tenfold. KFC has teenage kids cooking with industrial pressure cookers that could blow their ducking heads through the exhaust canopy if they ducked up. I literally have seen cooks bread their own hands up in flour and dunk them in 175 degrees Celsius oil as a lark. I have seen kids use boiling hot urn water to clean the caked on flour and oil off their work boot and that water ran into their boot giving them serious burns. I have seen kids pick up huge pots of boiling oil and tip them to refill a cooker as a shortcut to the slow melt method. Minimum age at the time was 14 and 9 months so they'd hire them at 14 flat with parents permission and you could be supervisor at 17 stroke 18. Stuff may have changed in the last 10 years since. I dunno. Teenagers watching teenagers with that type of equipment was nerve wracking. Not saying teenagers are stupid, just the ones I had to work with. Edit, for some of the more common responses. A lark means for fun. A term we use in Australia which answers another common question. Also, they would bread their hands over and over again until quite thick and then dip them in boiling oil. And just like food. The meat of their hand wouldn't cook straight away but it was a game of chicken. Sorry. I'm a dad. I pun till death now, to see who would leave their hand in there the longest. Worked for a private school. Grades were definitely bought. We were discouraged to give anything lower than a B. Had one principal that told a teacher to take the final for a student that went on summer vacation early. She called it a shadow final and said nonchalantly that it's no big deal. Just answer how you think the student would answer. This school is expensive. And these kids go on to fancy colleges because of these grades. Wash your fruits and vegetables very thoroughly a lot of them will end up being scooped off a disgusting warehouse floor and put back in the package after falling out. I used to work at Whole Foods. In our bakery department. Almost nothing. Aside from the bread is made from scratch there. This shouldn't be too shocking. Considering they're a multinational chain now. But really it'd be more correct to say that our cakes are assembled in house. I used to work in skincare, none of the products cost more than $2 to manufacture. But would retail at anything from $20 to $150 per product. Always amazed me how much people would shell out for anything with volcanic clay or snake venom cream. I worked at a car dealership. The $1200 car care system that we would discount to $900 was applied with about 15 squirts of a spray bottle. Many times I'd hang out with the detail guys so the customer wouldn't get suspicious at a quick turnaround. Worked in retail jewelry in Australia. This would apply pretty much everywhere. Most all items for sale, the exception would be promotional pieces. Or special collections, has a minimum and a maximum price. Don't take for face value that the price is what you have to pay. Ask straight up what is the min on this item. Say it like you know what you are talking about. Sometimes the min price can be hundreds lower than the displayed price. Michael Hill Jewelers will clean all jewelry for free. Full stop. Try to avoid going to dental chains. Aspen Dental. Etc. They push you to get procedures done you don't need and your appointment times are usually as fast as the doctor can find the first thing that's wrong. Doctors are overworked and this increases the chance they will mess up. If you can't pay, they help you finance. But you'll get it with a 20% plus interest rate when you miss your first payment. They also overwork and underpay staff. Which leads to disgruntled staff who don't care. And like all public service positions, there's no backbone against cheaty patients. You have to bend over backward and kiss their asses. The only way it works, and it does, is when you have caring skilled skilled staff across the board. This rarely happens due to high overturn. I had to get out when the new doctor at our office pulled too many teeth in a procedure and had to give a patient a full denture instead of a partial. He blamed the assistant and she was fired. The lab was overwhelmed with extra work from his mistakes. 
I didn't feel the doctor cared about anything but money and I couldn't morally do it. I couldn't say he was a good doctor when deep down I knew it was a lie. Reasons I hate commercialized medicine. Pizza Hut have a can of spray on garlic that they spray on their all their pizzas. At least they did in 2012. Walmart would make us work past our shift and then force us to clock in late the next night to avoid OT. The managers got so paranoid about OT that they started accusing us of going over 40. I was docked 4 hours when I had no overtime and had to use my PTO to get back to 40. Edit for clarification on my state. This was in 2012 and I live in Oklahoma. The labor board is a ducking joke and the keep you from going over your hours happened at two stores I worked at. Both stores also did shady sheet like having maintenance work both cleaning and stocking. I had to stock the first half of the night and clean 5 bathrooms the last half and had to get them all clean before 7. I will never work for Walmart again and I warn my friends not to work for them. I can assure you most things in Tim Hortons are not fresh. Unless you show up at rush hour. Then you might get just brewed coffee. Ray Florin's outlet clothing is made for outlet. Not from the main stores. Apple. All Tex and Genius employees are fully aware of widespread issues well before they are officially released to the public. They are never discussed at the morning staff meetings with management present but are always a source of discussion in the 3 o'clock to 3.30 tech staff meeting. For example, it got to a point where I would replace an iPhone 6 Plus for the display issue and sometimes had to replace the replacement 2-3 times while the customer was waiting. It was embarrassing and frustrating that the official release from the company was that the issue was caused by customer misuse. We all knew the truth and the techs with any sort of conscience would bend over backwards to do what we could to right the wrongs. That is one of several manufacturing issues masked as user error or misuse that we tried to work around. Edit, since this has blown up. I just wanted to state that Apple was an incredible company to work for and treated their employees like gold. I have nothing bad to say in terms of the company on an employer-employee basis. Okay I used to work for a major card service company. And before the law changed if you bought a gift card to say a red lobster and didn't use it for like say a year. It was a distinct possibility that the entire value of that card would be gone due to monthly service charges. So picture me the guy trying to explain to the guy how his $50 gift card was worth nothing. And you can imagine how that goes. Weirdly enough I ended up loving that job the most due to other types of accounts I used to handle. That was one of the worst parts of my job honestly. I worked for a cold storage company that held products for good humor. The inside of the freezer was minus 20 degrees. One day a friend of mine caught some boxes on the racking causing popsicles to go everywhere. When he stepped off his lift to look up into the racking to evaluate the situation he stepped on a popsicle causing his feet to fly up in the air and busted his head on the ground. He lasted a few days in IQ and eventually passed. Instead of this being a freak accident and giving us time to deal with it we were all brought into the freezer to look at the frozen puddle of blood to show us what could happen if we aren't careful. IDK the legality of this but it always seemed weird. But we would get bags of another company's product, Animal Premix, and manually transfer that product into a bag of our own. We would give these products lot codes of our own and sell them to customers. Used to work for a coffee shop whose claim to fame was that all food items were made from scratch in-house. All of their pastries were made using Pillsbury dough. And every other kind of dessert was bought from a grocery store. Every. Single. Automotive parts company will let you return anything if you simply call the district manager. I have yet to see anything not taken care of when it reaches their level. You think your battery is under warranty but it's not showing up? Call the DM. They'll tell the store to take care of it. 100%. Every time. The Canadian Tire in Port Coquitlam Canada blocks their emergency exits with metal bars to prevent theft and... Consequently prevents a quick exit in case the overly stuffed and flammables filled building catches fire. Someone use this knowledge to make some money. I'll take 5%. Edit, as stated in a comment in this thread. I haven't worked there since Oknoth of 2015 and haven't even lived in BC in over a year. 
if someone in the area wants to check it out. That seems like a very good idea. Didn't realize how serious this could be. The blocked emergency exits were located on the other side of the employees only doors at the back of the store. I have a picture somewhere. But I'm at work at the moment. I'll try and find them and follow up in another edit. Edit 2. No luck as of yet finding that picture. My computer has 4 years worth of pictures, most of them sorted in terrible ways. Probably doesn't help that I used to make stop motion movies and still have all the individual pictures. Probably better off waiting for someone who lives there to get a picture. Assuming the store still does this. If not. I guess the coast clear. If so. I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Good night. Etant does have secret phone plans. Depending on how long a customer you have been and how much you itch, always threaten to quit your service. They can hook you up. You have to go to an Etant store. Not an authorized dealer. Authorized dealer can't do shit. They just sell the phone's planes and can't really do much else. Also check to see if you can get a company discount. More than likely if your company is decent sized they have a discount. Also if you are a farm or something you can get a company discount. Overall they tanned will rip you off. They are betting you don't check all the charges on your bill and will try and slip some bullshit in there. It's not the store that sold you your plan's fault it's 100% a tanned corporate. I sold them for a while and just go get straight talk from Walmart. It's cheaper and if you don't have the money it's no big deal unlike a tank that will fee you out the ass. Also the I got a free phone is bullshit or I have an upgrade you are paying full price. It's just broken down into monthly payments. You might have walked out of the store paying nothing but you will be paying full price for that phone. The upgrade is a trick to get you another $500 minus $1000 in debt with the company so you remain a customer until that amount is paid off because you can't close your account until that phone is fully paid for. Former Starbucks partner here. I've worked at a variety of different stores during my stint as a barista. And I can't tell you how many times I've gone to clean an espresso machine and have found mold. I've only worked in one store that followed cleaning protocol correctly. Out of a total of 6, all in a major US. City. Also. Don't be a big dig when you place your order. Otherwise you will without a doubt be decaffed. I've even witnessed assistant store managers do this to customers. Panera. Bread comes in as dough in bread pans the night before. Bakers come in in the morning and put it in the oven. Everything was pre-made but assembled in store like the paninus. Leftover bread bakery products were free for closing employees to take home. I ate more bagels than I care to admit starving college students and all. Re keeps track of everything you return. Just like they keep track of everything you buy. If you abuse their return policy too much, people renting things for are a few days or a weekend before returning them are the biggest perpetrators. They'll just stop taking your returns. I guess it's less of a secret and more of a don't be in as warning. Edit, this got a ton of attention. So I'm just going to point out that there's loads of people saying that lots of stores do this as if every store's return policy is as generous as Rees. This is a repost I actually appreciate because it means we're getting a fresh batch of corporate secrets. I worked at Whole Foods. Your cookies and bread were heated in store. Not baked. Oh and in AM meetings. You're referred to as basket size. Not customers. Worked in management for Trader Joe's for 8 years and boy have a I got a doozy for you. The employees are actually that nice. Edit, this is not a dig at people who work other grocery or retail shops. Lots of those people are super nice as well. But when you were working at Kroger and they stick you on a cash register for like 6 hours in a row. You'd be grumpy too. Regal Cinema's movie theaters has something called a per cap. Per caps are calculated by dividing the attendance by how much concession sales there are. For example a low per cap is anything under $3. But a higher one is over $4. If there is a 15 cent variance from one day to the next. You had to fill out a report stating why. You couldn't state things like the obvious. For example if I manage a theater in Minneapolis. 
and per cap sucked this past Sunday because everyone was at the Super Bowl. I could not use sports as an excuse even though it was so obvious. Instead I would have to say something like. Large groups in attendance who didn't purchase concessions. I'll also shatter another myth that nobody cares if you sneak drinks or bootleg candy in. Just make sure you throw it away after the show so as to make cleaning the auditorium easier. It is marginally true that the theater makes most money from the concession stand as we only profit about 15 cents from a movie ticket. The rest goes to Hollywood. However. In the summer. Running all that AC. Neon. Ice machines. ETC it wasn't uncommon for the electric bill to hit $30,000 or so. Plus rent to them all was another $60,000 a month so yeah no. I've got a lot more if anyone cares. If you send your wife to pick up a load of lumber and she sits in the truck while the guy loads it. They will offload whatever knotted and warped piece of sheet boards they can get away with. Every pile is topped with a handful of ducked up boards that have been transferred from one pile to the next every time a new unit comes in. Knotted like Swiss cheese. Sometimes twisted like 90 degrees or warped so bad it won't even stack with other boards. They just lay in wait for that unaccompanied sucker who doesn't inspect the bullshit you give them. Local coffee shop. And scheduled maintenance meant that there were rats upstairs. Owner was a cheap ass and didn't want to close the entire shop down. So we kept the downstairs open for what could have forced his business to shut down forever had anyone found out. I quit that day.